welcome back to Beauty Within. It's your hosts, Felicia and Rowena. And if you've been following us for a while, you'll know how deep we can get when it comes to exfoliating the skin. In our past videos, we've covered topics on physical and chemical exfoliation and what we can do at home to get that bing bing skin. But what if we told you exfoliation can come in other interesting forms? If at home products and treatments are the normal basis of a skincare routine and laser treatments are the more super advanced forms and kind of scary, what's in the middle? <laughs> that, my friend, will be the topic for today's video. We're going to be talking about all things dermaplaning and threading, which we like to think of as the middle ground of exfoliation. So today we're going to go over what threading is, how it can benefit the skin and help our products permeate better. And Rowena actually got this done when you were recently in Taiwan yeah. for the first time. <laughs> so she'll be sharing all about her experiences with that. I broke out! <laughs> purge. I purge. Then we'll go into a different type of facial hair exfoliation known as dermoplaning. And also something that you might not have heard about yet known as cow sori. And we looked into the different effects it can have on the skin and share all of that with you guys. So let's first get into threading. <laughs> We all want that soft and glowing baby skin, right? Well, most of you might be familiar with eyebrow threading, and it's great if you wanna get those clean and arched brows. But if you guys are exfoliating fans, then you might know that there's also ways that you can thread your entire face. Nobody knows the exact origin of facial threading, but many speculate that it started 6,000 years ago in India or Central Asia as a method of hair removal. Then it spread to other parts of the world, and finally, to the US. And some actually prefer threading over laser hair removal or even waxing because it's quick, it's precise, and gentle if done right, right? Because no one wants to crawl home in tears going like, the pain. Definitely I'm scared of um, wax on the face because it can it can bruise your skin it could if done right though it's not too bad so what exactly is threading it's the process of removing all the unwanted little vellus hairs on your face commonly known as peach fuzz so cute and it's a form of epilation which means you're removing the entire hair from its root and not just what's on the surface which derma planning does and it's said to help slow down and reduce the hair growth as well and we'll be talking about some myths later but it's not like you thread your face and you're gonna grow back a gorilla <laughs> <laughs> which is sometimes out con my concern yeah <laughs> And instead of using a blade, you're using a thread. The process works like this. The thread, usually made of cotton, is doubled, twisted, and rolled out. In feathery flicks, the thread picks up and traps several hairs at a time, pulling them straight out from the hair follicle. This should take approximately 15 to 20 minutes if you're doing the full face. And they also say that after this is done on your face, you don't want to put like heavy creams or anything on it, and you definitely want to stay away from makeup. The pores are open. They're like welcoming everything in. Yeah, and makeup is not something to welcome into the pores. <laughs> so there are obviously varying opinions about yes. threading, as with skincare in general. So why don't you tell us about yours? Okay, so in Taiwan, threading is known as banbing. And what that you sounds like the pancake. Jianbing. <laughs> <laughs> Both on the street. Sure. And, and the thing is, they're just lined on the street and they're in little huts and there's little plastic colorful stools. That Sounds you sit on. so sanitary. Yes. Love Asia. Right? <laughs> and so my mom, being very, very smart, she went down to like a restaurant and was like, hey, can we like buy some food? By the way, yeah. um, who's the best lady that does threading? Yeah. So then we went to her. So right before we started, she got this chalk out of her drawer and just I'm sure it's maybe a special chalk. <laughs> Does your mom ever have chalk in her sewing kit? Because you know sometimes oh, to like, mock like that. And stuff? It, it reminded oh, me of no, that, no. but I, I hope it wasn't. Yeah. I think it's to make your face to make it not oily, so it's easier to thread the hairs. Okay, that makes sense. Was your face clean? Did they have to clean your face? No, she just put on the chalk and then. Interesting. Went the whole process was pretty 
quick. Uh -huh. I wouldn't say it's painless. If anything, it felt like electric zapping. Because when they pull the thread and it pulls yeah. out your hair, you can actually feel like, like the row of hair being pulled mm -hmm. out. And it just felt like electric zapping on your face. Oh my god. Yeah. And then what happens when they get to the eyebrows? They shape it for you, which I was pissed. <laughs> I was so mad. I did not expect her to shape my eyebrows because different <laughs> countries have different beauty standards, yeah. right? And I enjoy my more voluptuous, thick. thick eyebrows, which she trimmed. And eyebrows make a person, like they shape your face. So afterwards, I took a selfie and sent it to our team and they're legit just like, ha ha. And then she looks like Gwen Stefani in the 90s. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Now they've grown back, mm -hmm. thankfully. The thing is, afterwards, she put on winter melon water, which is supposed to be very soothing and calming. And then she was like, do you want to exfoliate your face for an extra like 200 Taiwanese dollars? It's the physical exfoliant where if you rub oh, it, it pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she did that and she was like, like going into my face. Mm. I don't know if it was the threading and then that, or if it was just the threading and the exfoliation or the exfoliation on its own that caused my skin to purge. Or the fact that you started with just chalk on your face yeah. and didn't even wash it. Yeah. So it could be multitude of things. Yes, I think it's everything combined. If you guys have tried any threading in Asia, let us know your experience. Yeah. So there are a lot of people who have mastered the threading technique and are able to do this themselves very quickly and very effectively. And after watching a few videos, I was so keen to try this out at home. I'm like, right, I got this. I have like mustache hair that I've just let chilled for my entire life. I'm like, if I don't look like a man, then I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Embrace it. <laughs> but just a disclaimer, once again, we highly recommend that you visit a professional threader to get the job done like first maybe. And you can even ask them for tips at yeah. home because there's a very likely chance that you will mess up and really irritate your skin. So don't say we didn't warn you guys, right? But if after we said all of that, you're like, nah, I got this fam, I'm gonna try this out, then like there me. are some home DIY treatments you can try given that you're extremely careful. Mm -hmm. They say you can just use normal thread, like what you would use for your clothes. You take about a 14 inches of the cotton thread and then you put it together and you just tie a basic knot at the top. Right? So then you have this. So you open it up and then you have the string and then what you do is you twist it about four to 10 times. So you just three, four, five, six. And then you alternate. So one goes up, one goes down, one goes up, one goes down. And then it creates a scissor effect. So you kind of have to have hand-eye coordination. <laughs> Wait, do my arm. Nah, are you sure? Yeah. You have to be like swift. They're so, s ah! Ah! <laughs> that hurt! Wow, it did pluck! So when you like open this one, it then creates tension and it wraps your hair in this middle section. So it really does pull it out. I see your hair. <laughs> Dude, my arm is like prime real estate for threading. It's so hairy. I hate my life. <laughs> it's okay, it's cute. <laughs> All right, guys, so now that we've run through the theory, I'm going to be your test guinea pig and I'm going to be trying it out for the first time threading at home. I've made sure I cleaned this area, but I do have like <laughs> a mustache. You can definitely see it. You know, it's nothing crazy. But if you do go close up, I do have like fur here. So I have my string here. Um, but I'm just gonna take like this much. Think. Okay, I think I might have made it too long, but we'll see. Okay, so then we tie just a simple knot at the end. Bloop. Let's see how this feels. Twist it a couple of times. Like this. Until we have this mechanism. Hold on, I'm gonna go a little bit more. All right, ready? <laughs> okay, I'm scared it will hurt. 
Okay, so just make sure this part is completely like clean, cleansed. You don't want any bacteria getting in there. Okay, so let's try this side. Wait, I'm confused. I feel like this is too big. Okay, let's let's do another one. Uh, uh. Okay, no, this looks more workable. Ah, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, I did nine twists. Oh my God, like honestly. All right, okay, this is a little more manageable, you see? I'm not trying to like cramp my hand trying to open it, okay. Ah! <laughs> oh my God, it actually works. Ow. Ah. Ah, oh my, oh my God. Whoa. Oh wait, they do this like thing to make it taut. Oh my. Ah, <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm not even like looking into a mirror. I'm just kind of peering into the viewfinder. Oh, oh, that really hurt. Oh my goodness. You can see my little hairs in here. <gasps> it. Full on plucked it out, yo. <gasps> wow, okay. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm sweating. I'm full on sweating. It's plucked all my mustache hairs. Oh, ah. oh, yo, it's full on plucking the hairs. I wish you could see this. It's even got like the root of my hair in there and everything because it twists it up. Wow, I think I've cleared this area, amazing. Okay, so then this one, I feel like I have to go this way, but I'm not quite hand-eye. Mm. Wow, it's actually taken my hair off. Mm. 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 <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have so much hair. It doesn't actually hurt that much. Once you get used to that kind of like razor slice across, okay, that sounds way too intense as well. It's not that bad. I'm like a baboon. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so that's my little at home testing threading. If you have super sensitive skin, maybe like stay away from this and just keep it there. This is more of just like me testing it out for you guys <laughs> for the first time. Don't force it, don't feel like you have to do this. It was just purely out of my own curiosity. <laughs> would I do this again? I think I would. So yeah, back to the video. After you're finished, take some aloe vera or even rose water and apply that over any of the threaded areas to really soothe and calm that section of your face. Mm -hmm. But I recently found out from one of our team members that Tweezer Man has this. Wow. Yeah. That looks so, like a contraption. Right? It looks like a tongue scraper. But the cool thing is at the top, there's like a coil. And what you do is just roll and twist the coil so the coil wraps your little vellus hairs. <laughs> this was expensive, by the way. Tweezer Man is expensive. It is. Was this like 20, 30? It was $32. Moving on to dermal planning, which is referred to as epidermal leveling or micro planning. And it's formally defined as cosmetic procedure that removes the uppermost layer of the skin using a sterile surgical blade. Ah! <laughs> that sounds scary. While that sounds scary, it's actually a common in spa procedure that typically lasts around 30 minutes and is relatively painless and pretty quick. So, how exactly does derma planning work? Before we get into that, let's talk a little science. When you look closely in the mirror, you'll start to notice a fine light hair that's covering your entire face. This is the peach fuzz that we're talking about. Or vellus, and it makes up one out of the three types of hair located on our bodies, and the other two are lenugo and terminal hair. That sounds like my um, Nespresso coffee buds. <laughs> lenugo. 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 Can you imagine that? <laughs> in Italian. Lenugo today. 
and it's filled with little hairs, but it's just a cup of hairs. <laughs> Some of you might not like the look of these vellus hairs, but they serve multiple functions. They help to regulate the body's temperature by thermal insulation during the colder months and sweat evaporation during the warmer months. Also, it helps you pick up that sensation when insects and other things might be crawling across your skin and spot potential parasites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But fun fact, I learned, oh, it was some like body documentary, right? And then they said- Fell and her doctor. <laughs> people who develop anorexia, their peach fuzz Oh, they do. Grows. Yes, because they're trying to keep your body warm. Yeah, insulate, because you don't have fat. Yeah. So interesting. So for derma planning, you're removing all of that peach fuzz on your face, plus all the other things that might go with it. So goodbye, spidery senses. <laughs> If you go get this done at a facialist, here's what they do. The specialist uses a blade to gently scrape across different sections of the face in light and feathery strokes. And this scraping is helping get rid of the dead skin cells and the vellus hairs that are on the stratum corneum, so the very top layer of skin, which is kind of dead skin anyway. It's just kind of like scraping very gently. Yeah. They do very short It's like strokes. when you use the eyebrow yeah. blade to kind of trim it, yeah. I would use that for here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gently like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they take a sterile stainless scalpel and kind of glide or scrape at more or less a 30 to 45 degree angle. And the other hand keeps the skin taut and steady to avoid any injury because when the skin isn't taut, you, you like cut you it You will really cut easily. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then once the whole derma planning process is done, the person will then finish off with a mini facial, kind of like yours, um, to give your skin a little bit more of that TLC to protect it because if you imagine it, it's like you're naked in the winter snow. Yeah, and your pores are like, hello, yeah. Welcome everyone, come into open yeah. house. <laughs> What's left in the end is smooth and soft skin that's ready for any product to sink into. Bing, bing! Yeah. Which is one of the biggest reasons people do it, right? And it's also worth mentioning that although derma planning is pretty accessible, like threading, it's definitely not suitable for all skin types, especially once again, for those with active acne, hypersensitive skin, or have some sort of current inflammatory skin condition like eczema, rosacea, or psoriasis. I mean, if you think about it, you are literally running a blade down your active pimples <laughs> or already flaky patches. Yeah. That's like, help. Yeah. So same thing can happen with like microneedling, same with threading. You don't want to aggravate active bacteria and spread that. No thanks, we have enough problems in life. And for those wondering, a big deal. It sounds exactly the same as shaving your face. I can do this at home without spending all this money, which is true. But although derma planning follows a similar procedure as shaving, it's actually not the same. Because when you shave, you're shaving off the visible thick hairs off your body, right? Known as the terminal hair, rather than the baby vellus hairs that we're really going for. Why is derma planning so hyped. A lot of women swear by how it gives that immediate effect after just one session and they say that their skin feels really soft and smooth like a baby's butt. It's like dolphin. <laughs> Additionally, many women note how dermaplaning help contribute to clear and perfect complexion. The reason since dermaplaning help to exfoliate the surface layer of the skin and with the peach fuss out of the way, you can expect to see your skincare products sink in better and work a lot more effectively into the deeper layers of your skin. A part of me also thinks like, is that natural? You know, because we're like born with this peach fuzz, right? And I feel like products would sink in regardless yeah. of whether the hair is there. Maybe it's the, the smooth. I agree with the smoothing yeah. part. Like my products just skin. glide it on. Mm. And then without the peach fuzz, it just it just glides on even more. Even more, yeah. Because remember when we got the facial, she's like, your products can't sink in through the dead skin. Yeah. So this is getting rid of the dead skin. And the same applies with makeup because apparently the evened skin texture is a godsend for creating that flawless canvas for foundation, flawless for like even mineral powder or anything like that. And generally, whenever you start with a good base, you're likely to end up with a face that is glowy and beautiful. Because it is a form of physical exfoliant, you're just shedding skin, yeah. which will then help lighten hyperpigmentation. And on top of that, there aren't as many studies to back up these claims, and we'll actually need more evidence to see if they can actually help with 
things yeah. like hyperpigmentation. You will hear some dermatologists talk about the anti-aging aspect of it, so there might be some truth to it. And according to an article that we read um, on Allure, there was a dermatologist, Neil Sadik, who notes that the motion of scraping creates microscopic wounds in the skin. And this leads the skin to react by regulating certain growth factors, which then in turn stimulates collagen production, which is an interesting point because when you do do even chemical exfoliants and physical exfoliating, you are kind of traumatizing the skin in a way to Shock. encourage, yeah, new things. Produce. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. rid of, unbind. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye and see you in Japan because <laughs> in Japan, there's something called cow sori. For all you non-Japanese speakers out there, you might think, what in the world is cow sori? The term cow sori literally translates to face shaving or a shaved face. You get the idea. And just like how derma planning is a common procedure used here today, Kaosori is also a very popular procedure and a beauty custom that's in Japan that really grew into popularity since 2004. So because there are a lot of pros and cons and different reviews, let's talk about some of the myths surrounding any sort of these like surface yes. hair things. Removal. <laughs> well, it's time to do some debunking. Some people say, isn't this the same as microdermabrasion? Well, sort of. According to the same New York City dermatologist, Neil Sedic, he thinks that derma planning is a deeper form of microdermabrasion because both treatments resurface the skin, but derma planning takes off most of the epidermis or the outermost layers of the skin, while microdermabrasion works to target the very surface layers of the skin or the stratum corneum and the process doesn't require shaving off the peach fuzz. Another concern is, is my hair going to grow back darker and thicker? The short answer is no, your hair won't actually grow back thicker and more <laughs> voluminous. Like... Yeah. <laughs> the hair actually stays the same color, it's just your eyes playing tricks on you because of the brightened new skin. And I think it also stays the same um, thickness. It's said that it looks thicker because the hair is cut and the way it's cut, it makes it look thicker. Because if you think about it, you cut it off bluntly like that, right? So the perimeter is like this. But when you grow naturally, it grows like this. But that's interesting because as a kid, did your parents shave your head? Yeah. Because they thought it would grow thicker, right? Like healthier and more luscious. So that's all a myth. Yeah, I guess. Next concern, is this going to break me out? I think the procedure in itself is not supposed to cause breakouts. It's more like the reaction with products maybe used afterwards that can possibly break you out. But if you have acne prone skin or it's irritated or it's sensitive, then yes, it can most definitely cause breakouts. And if you go to a place that's not sanitary. On the side of the street in Taiwan. <laughs> yeah. So that was just a fun video. We thought we'd like share it with you guys since a lot of you ask about demo planning and threading. And it was a big thing. Do you remember back like maybe a year or two ago, all these YouTube videos came up? I don't think it's needed. No. And if it only helps my skin become smoother, I think I can go without it. You're given everything for a reason. Yeah. And it's like, you know, maybe because we're Asian, we have less facial hair to begin with, but I feel like in general, it's learning to love and embrace ourselves mm. for what we've been blessed with. A little maintenance never killed anyone. If you have a monobrow, pluck that away. If you don't want to, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. 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 Bye.